All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Friday. You heard all those cheers at the beginning of the intro, and I think it's because it's Friday and we're so excited. So uh, as you can see, Rip's not here with us this week. It's the Plant Strong Coaching Takeover. Uh, I am John Fitzgerald, one of the Plant Strong Coaches, and with me is... Amy Mackey. It's good to be here with you on this fine Friday. Hope you are all well, and thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. So everyone's... Uh, punching in where they're calling from Michigan or watching from Michigan. We got Baltimore, Maryland. I was just telling uh, Amy and Bess, who's the producer, that um, I'm in, in Ohio and we've had maybe three, maybe four snow events all winter, which is totally unusual for us. But of course, it's March 10th and it's snowing and we're expecting uh, four or six inches. So <laughs> as I said to them before, I said, it's never really not winter in Cleveland. So, <laughs> So hopefully you guys are having a little better weather than we're having and hopefully everyone's set themselves up for a fantastic weekend. So again, thank you for joining us um, today. Today, we want to talk to you a little bit about the mistakes that you make, right? The biggest mistakes that you make, because there's a lot of mistakes we all make when we make this change. I did it when I started this transition almost nine years ago now. Um, and I'm sure, Amy, you had the same when you did it. What, you're up to like 14 years now? I think it's heading on 13. Yeah. 13, yeah. So, you know, again, there's mistakes that we make along the way. And the, the important thing is two things, right? Learn from your mistakes and don't let them stop you from getting where you want to go. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the biggest mistakes, the ones that Amy and I uh, see most often. Uh, we've been doing the uh, Plant Strong Coaching Program now for almost five years, four and a half years. And, uh, you know, you see some of the same mistakes over and over again. So we've learned what people, where they trip up, where their hurdles are. And, and so we want to talk to you about that today and how you can kind of get started. So Amy, let's start off with the one that gets people every time and probably not just with setting goals with what they eat and how they exercise, high expectations or too high expectations. Well, absolutely. You know, we have seen so many times over the years of coaching on this program and in our Facebook groups and the emails we receive and just even meeting people in person when we're out and about. When you decide that you're going to go plant strong, you have to understand that you didn't get to the health issues you may be having overnight. They've accumulated over the years and it may take some time to unravel them. What we love to show people is that you can really make an impact in just seven days by changing the way that you do things, but seven days is probably not gonna be enough to get you to your health goals. This is a journey, not a race. We really want people to set their expectations and know that one of the biggest things that people don't take into consideration or kind of fail to remember, let's put it that way, is that this plan works as long as you work the plan. Like anything else, if you decide that you are going to fill up your car with gas every time you want a trip and then you stop filling up your car with gas, what happens? <laughs> You're not going to get very far. This is definitely a journey. We want to be with you on the course of your journey to help you along the way. But do set, set your expectations that it could take you weeks, months, or even some years to undo all of the damage that you've done that we've all done by growing up on the standard American diet. When you're trying to dismantle those things, it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're here for you. Absolutely. And, and Alicia put in the comments, she's been, she's on year 20. So good for Alicia. That's amazing. You know, uh, I have a friend who's been vegan, which isn't quite plant strong, but it's close, has been vegan for 35 years. And when she first told me that, I'm like, I don't even think that was a word 35 years ago. And she said, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot different than it is today. A lot less options. So that's the good part, right? You have a lot more options to you available off the store shelf or off the, the internet, you know, or plantstrongfoods.com. You have a lot more options available to help you make this an easier trip, an easier journey. But I want you to think about something. A lot of the higher expectations, in my opinion, come from the marketing people, right? We see the ads on TV or on the internet about, you know, so-and-so lost 30 pounds in 30 days, or they lost 50 pounds in two weeks or whatever it is. And so we think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And all I have to do is follow this plan. First of all, some of those, I'm not going to say they're fake, but some of those are individual circumstances. And we really don't know, you know, everyone kind of reacts differently to a change in lifestyle. The other thing to keep in mind, though, is that may be a temporary loss, Right. What they don't tell you is how many pounds they gained back two weeks after that, right? And so 
when you do it slow and steady, right? The old saying, slow and steady wins the race. When you do it slow and steady, it's more likely to A, end in results that you are able to stick to, and B, become more of a sustainable lifestyle versus just a, a quick fad diet that, okay, great, I lost a lot of water weight because I didn't eat for two weeks, but now I'm ravaged and I'm starting to eat like crazy. And, and we gain it back. And, and a lot of times studies show, most of the time, we gain more weight back. So again, if, if that's your goal or if getting to your health goals, you know, lowering your blood numbers, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, it takes time. And I think that the, the key to remember is like Amy said, it's a journey. It's not something that you say, okay, I'm going to eat this way for four months and be that as may and boom, I'm done, right? It's really for the rest of your life. But on the other side, right, Amy, we tell people, don't think about it, that you have to do it for the rest of your life. Just focus on the next seven days. And that helps a keep you on target and keep your expectations in line. Oh, absolutely. And I'll throw in another one for you comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. Don't compare yourself to others because we all have different metabolisms. We all have different health um, expectations. The, the things that we need to overcome are all different from person to person. And it may take you a quicker time than someone else. It may take you a longer time. There are so many factors in play when it comes to your A1C, your blood pressure, your stress management, all of those things all really play a role together. So set your expectations that you're going to set yourself out on an adventure. You are going to try a bunch of new things. You are going to learn a lot in the process and you're going to try and enjoy it as much as you can. Instead of, I want to use lose five pounds by Tuesday, right? <laughs> that can really set up the difference in expectations is really how you approach it. Yeah, absolutely. So don't right, set sure. your expectations too high. You do want to set your goals a little outside your comfort zone. So you grow and you progress. And that's how we get better, right? By challenging ourselves. But but don't don't get crazy about it. All right, Amy, number two, let's talk about the thing that people also do. And that is overcomplicate this change right? It's a big change. We're not going to kid you and say, oh, it's easy to do. Anyone can do it. Just put your mind to it, right? It is a difficult change when you're changing. If you think about it, you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and you've been eating the standard American diet for that many years. It's hard to all of a sudden say, all right, I'm going to eat something different. So what a lot of people do is they start to really overthink it and do too much. And Amy, one of the things we recommend is bowl building. Let's talk bowl building for a second, because to me, that was the savior once I figured that out. I think the first week that I set out to be vegan um, in 2010, um, I actually ended up making a ton of recipes, spent a ton of time in the kitchen, and I wasn't used to that because I think we dined out a whole lot more often than I really realized that we did. And so when you set about to make as many of these recipes so you can eat and do all of the things and have your food and take your lunches, I tackled it from the recipe aspect and that took me forever. And I was a little defeated because I thought, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. I don't know that I want to do this all the time. What saved me really truly was bowl building. And what does that mean exactly? Well, when we talk about bowl building, all we're talking about is eating the foods that we really like all together in one bowl that we may have prepared some of those ingredients ahead of time which is batch cooking. For example, I love potatoes. So I bake a big batch of potatoes every week and I use those in many of the bowls that I make throughout the course of the, the, the week, whether it's my breakfast, I love breakfast potatoes. I also love putting potatoes on my salads. Those are great. And also chopping some up to add to soups or even into stir fries. Potatoes are such a versatile tool. I use a lot of those when I am doing my batch cooking so I can assemble really easy meals really quickly. One of my favorites, of course, is kale, potatoes, hummus, and hot sauce. I love that. That's one of my favorite breakfasts that I make. There are so many different ways that you can use your favorite ingredients in a bowl with other with other things like your greens. You want to add your your different kinds of veggies in there, maybe some lentils or beans. Maybe you're having it on rice instead of potatoes. Maybe you're going to add some of your favorite dressing, like the um, rips, uh, or the sweet fire dressing is one of my mm, favorites. Yeah. I love that recipe. You're going to top it with your sparks. You're going to just put these things together really easily. You can heat it up. You can eat it room temperature. You can eat it cold out of the fridge in a box to go. There's really an unlimited way you can enjoy building meals that are super simple by using our batch cooking method 
and just making it really super simple. Just amping up the flavors by the choices that you choose to put on your bowl. Absolutely. I love that. And the other thing when it comes to overcomplicating is people read books, they read blog posts, they read internet posts, and, and they, they start doing all the, okay, I need six servings of this and three servings of that and two of these and three of those. And, and they're just like, oh my gosh, I, how do I keep track of all this? And, you know, Adam Sud, who's a regular speaker at Plant Strong Events, when he first started eating this way, um, if you're not familiar with Adam, he has a great story. You can see him on Plant Based Addict uh, on Instagram. But the point is, is he had the same breakfast, lunch, and dinner, absolutely the exact same breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 10 straight months. That's all he ate. So he oversimplified. I don't know if I could do that, but he did it and it worked for him right? So make it simple. Find something, right? Everyone, the first complaint, right, Amy? It's like, oh, it, I, I don't know what I'm going to eat. It's so boring. Well, if you think about it, when you ate the standard American diet, the one you're switching from, everyone kind of eats about the same 10 to 12 meals on a rotation week after week after week. You're not very creative. You don't think outside the box. It's just like, okay, this is what I, I always have hot dogs. I always have hamburgers. I always have mac and cheese, whatever it is. And so you start to think like, oh my gosh, now I've got to come up with this whole new recipe, you know, backlog. You don't, you build bowls like Amy was talking about. And here's the thing, think about making it simple. So for one week, have oatmeal with banana and little, you know, um, cinnamon on it for breakfast. At, at lunch, have a bowl with greens and potatoes and maybe rice and mango. And, and for dinner, have a salad with some, maybe some tofu or tempeh. And that's what you have every night that week. It also helps with the batch cooking. So you're not making a bunch of different stuff that by the end of the week, you may not be able to use, especially if you're doing this by yourself in your household. So, you know, again, think about produce. Think about the produce you like. Think about the produce that maybe you haven't had in years because you just aren't thinking about having that and you haven't bought it in a while. Just don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple because the more complicated it is, the harder it is the less likely you are to be able to stick to it. Absolutely. I like to batch cook a few ingredients. I usually do my potatoes. I pick a grain and I pick a bean. I usually do the beans in my Instapot. Then I like to make a emergency soup recipe. I put that in my Instapot. I will cook up a soup recipe, divide it up into jars, put it in my freezer for those days that I really don't feel like cooking or feel like ordering takeout because I've just had that day. Now I know that I'll have that meal in the refrigerator. I love doing things for my husband who doesn't like potatoes for breakfast. He prefers oatmeal. So I make him um, uh, overnight oat jars. I make those on, on Sunday. They're good for the week in the refrigerator. He takes those. He can eat those cold or heat those up. And I like to have a few things chopped up for snacks, whether it's some melon or um, some cucumber slices or whatever it is that I'm snacking on that week, I like to have those at the ready as well. I usually have a pitcher of iced tea of our plant strong tea in the refrigerator because I love our raspberry hibiscus. And let's see, what else do I usually have? Oh, some grab and go fruit like apples or bananas and that kind of thing as well. That's basically my plan. I can add a box of our chili on top of the potatoes or I can pull out a pizza crust out of the freezer and do something with that, add some veggies on top and have a really quick meal really quickly. This doesn't have to be complicated. You can make it as elaborate as you'd like. If you love spending time in the kitchen, by all means, enjoy yourself, definitely. But if you're rushed for time, if you aren't a great cook and really don't know how to do things, um, especially when it comes to cooking with plants, maybe bowl building is the method that you wanna choose because it can be really simple and really tasty. Absolutely. And Dara asked, Dara in the comment section asked a great question talking about staying full and feeling full, you know, not being hungry right after you eat. And uh, two things on that. First of all, think fiber, right? Fiber rich foods, grains, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables will fill you up, right? You can, you can not be very hungry after eating a lot of broccoli for dinner or lunch, right? Because that really fills you up. And the other thing is, Think about your portion sizes, right? Because we've all been, we've all grown up, grown up when we ate the standard American diet and we wanted to go on a diet to lose weight. What what was the thing we did? We ate less. We ate less of we ate the same foods, but we ate less of it. The difference with going plant based or plant strong is that you can have copious amounts of delicious food because the calorie density is a lot lower 
with the with the produce and the plant-based food. So load up on the broccoli and the rice and the grains and the other fruits and vegetables. And believe me, all that fiber will definitely fill you up. All right. Go ahead, Amy. I love this question from Brian. This is one of my favorite questions. So if you are battling type 2 diabetes, you're trying to lower your AC, you want to stick to whole intact grains, which are things like whole uh, brown rice or quinoa or farro or any of the whole intact grains as opposed to pasta or breads, okay? Secondly, you're going to want to balance that bowl out by having half of your plate or bowl be greens. Mm -hmm. Our greens, the arugula, the uh, mustard greens, the kale, the spinach, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, lots of other greens can go on half of your plate. It's the greens that's going to help to balance out that complex carb load. So you're going to want to make sure that you do that. Also, really key for the whole type 2 diabetes A1C lowering and reversing experiment here that you're you're on at each plate. So think about it that way. With each plate or bowl, you have the opportunity to really start to make an impact on that number. You're going to want to pick things like beans over tofu. You're going to want to pick things um, that don't have as much added fat. So for example, in your oatmeal, you're not going to want to add nuts or peanut butter to that. You're going to want to leave that fat aside for now. Maybe if you're going to use any avocado, use only a little bit. It's really the fats that will help to impact that number more than the carbs. There's some great videos on YouTube. If you Google Jane Esselstyn diabetes, you can find out the reason why fat is really really the biggest indicator of how you're going to lower your A1C. That's the dietary fat that we're taking in through oils or avocados or nuts or seeds or nut butters. So that's how you're going to want to balance out your plate. Leave the fat aside, pick better options, and have half your plate be um, greens. Absolutely. Everyone always thinks no carbs, no carbs, no carbs when you're battling type 2 diabetes. And, and uh, that is not the case like Amy just talked about. Um, there was another great question here. Oh, sliced vegan cheese that they sell in the grocery store. As far as, you know, as you're making the transition, maybe if, if you're really a cheese lover, uh, but as far as healthy goes, not healthy at all. It is just loaded with saturated fats and oil. If you look at the ingredients, almost every single vegan cheese on the market, um, is just loaded with oil. It's all coconut oil or whatever type of oil their choice is for that, for that brand. So don't don't fall for that. The best way to do it is to quit cold turkey and, and find other substitutes by using hummus or something like that instead of cheese. So, all right, Amy, let's get to the third big one that we wanted to talk about today. And really, I think it's the biggest one. And it's the one we talk about a lot in the coaching program. And that's mindset. So let's talk a little bit about how important mindset is when you're making this change, because I think a lot of people go into this like, they see something on the news or they walk out of their doctor's office and they're like, okay, I've got to make changes. And all they do is they've got that temporary motivation, that temporary, you know, feeling like I want to change something, but they don't change their mindset. Well, that's just it. When we set out on any new plan, most of us tackle it from the, this is the list of foods I can have. This is the list of the foods I'm not going to have. These are the recipes I'm going to make for the next seven days, month, six years, whatever time period you want to pick. But we don't tackle it from here. And ultimately, what's really going to help you find success is if you really just change the way that you think about food, change the way that you think about your life and your goals in the respect of what would you like to accomplish? Where can you picture yourself being three years from now with your health, with the things that you're doing, with your activities, whether or not you're sleeping better, whether or not you've gotten off your medications are you out adventuring? Are you are you walking with your friends? Are you going for hikes or kayaking or riding bikes? What is it that you are doing to spend your time? Visualize yourself three, three, three years, three months, 13 years, take your pick, <laughs> any of those numbers, and visualize where it is that you want to be. You're not going to get there on a plan that doesn't tackle mindset because really, in order to change your life, you really do have to change your mind. That's that's such a cliche, but it's really, really true. When you start thinking about the fuels that you're eating, whether it's your, your plants, your vegetables, your greens, your beans, as opposed to cheeseburgers and junk food and convenience items, thinking about alcohol consumption, thinking about how much you're moving your body, think about how much you're sitting during the course of the day. Think about your, um, your self-care and your mindfulness. There are so many things that go into our health. It's not really just the food. In fact, 
I'd say that it's more mindset than it is food in general. But when you really set out to change the way that you are going to envision your life, envision your future, envision the things that you want to do and accomplish in this world, I think that you can really tackle how you eat, how you move your body, how you are you are focusing on your mindfulness, your sleep, all of those things really does make a difference when it comes to your success. If you really decide that you're going to do something, there will not be any stopping you. Truly, when you focus on all of the things that you want to accomplish in this world, I think that really we are the only thing that stands in our way from all of our goals. So between goal setting and the mindset that you have around those things can really make a huge difference. Yeah. And and one of the reasons we talk so much about mindset is because it's really a foundational piece to any lifestyle change you're going to make, whether it's what you eat, how you eat, what you do for exercise, or even if you exercise, right? It's a foundational piece because it kind of, I describe it as the umbrella that everything else that you have to do to make the changes, it has to be under the umbrella, right? Whether it's changing the foods you eat, doing what, what you're going to do for exercise, um, handling struggles and hurdles that are obviously going to come your way when you make a lifestyle change like this and setting up habits that not only work for you for a day or two, but setting up habits that are sustainable for the rest of your life, right? And the only way you do that is by having the correct mindset, right? It's the six inches between your ears that is the most important to making any type of change in your life, whether it's, you know, the type of people you hang out with, whether it's the food you eat, whether it's where you want to travel, you have to have the ideas in your head and be comfortable with those ideas. And they may be a little uncomfortable at first, right? If you've been eating the standard American diet for 40 years, it's going to seem a little strange to suddenly start eating, you know, more fruits and veggies, more whole grains, more, you know, tempeh tofu, stuff like that. It's going to seem weird. But if you've got the right mindset where you can handle anything. So when we say mindset, what we're talking about is, you know, there's a spectrum that mindset comes on, right? There's the uh, fixed mindset and there's the growth side of the spectrum. Fixed mindset are people that, oh, I've tried that before. I, I, I'm just going to give up. I'll never lose the weight, right? Just very down, very like thinking like the past is the future, right? The pa I've, I've had trouble in the past. I'm going to have trouble in the future. The growth side of the mindset is someone that says, hey, you know what? I really want to make this change. It's important to me because of X. Or, you know what? I know there's going to be hurdles. I know there's going to be struggles, but I love a good challenge. And I'm up for this because the change that I want to make is that important. So when you have that mindset in place, when you can think like that and be at the growth end of the spectrum, and you're not always at one end or the other, right? We move throughout the day. We move throughout the week, depending on who we're with, what we're doing, the situation that we're in. So the point is, is to keep yourself as much to the growth end of that spectrum as possible, because like we talked about, there's going to be situations that you find yourself in that you don't know what to do, or you struggle with, or you just like, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to fail. But if you think with the right mindset and say, it's okay, think, take a breath, think how this is important to me. This lifestyle change that I chose is important to me. So how do I handle this situation? How do I handle this comment? What do I do for a meal today? I'm short on time. I didn't do my batch cooking like Coach Amy told me to do. I've got a few things in the fridge. How do I make this happen? So maybe it's not this beautiful full meal that you were predicting or thought you might have. Maybe it's just getting healthy food as fuel into your body because you took the mindset of, I'm just not going to give up just because I don't have everything I need to make a meal. So um, let's see if we've got some questions here. Um, oh, here we go. Having trouble getting greens. Oh, Amy, this is a good one for you. Fresh cut veggies. What do you say, Amy? Do you always have to have greens or is that just... The, the gold standard varsity program? Well, the gold standard is six servings of greens per day. If you're having trouble getting your greens, I want to remind you that it can be broccoli, it can be cauliflower, it can be asparagus, Brussels sprouts, spinach, mustard greens, turnip greens. I can't do it like Dr. Esselstyn. Yeah, I was going to say, you're almost there. Amy. You're going. <laughs> Cilantro, <laughs> arugula, parsley, um, but bok choy, swishard, um, all of those are our greens. What we're looking for are the nitric oxide powerhouses. That's generally not found in carrots. Carrots are loaded with beta, beta carotene, which are great, but not what we're talking about when it comes to greens. I have a tip for you about greens, though. One of the easiest ways to get your greens is just to mix them in with everything else. For example, if I make a big bowl of soup, I always put in a giant handful of kale. 
even if there's kale in it already or another green, I always just add a little bit extra. That's one of the ways that you can really help to add greens. However, just know that if you are brand new and beginning, six servings of greens is hard. It can be hard, mm -hmm. especially if you're not used to having those things. What you're doing is working your way up the spectrum, like John said, with the, with the growth mindset. We don't want you to say, oh, I can't ever, I'm never going to be able to do six servings of greens. Therefore, I'm not going to have any. There's no bother. There's no point. We want you to do your best. Try to work in your greens. Uh, rice cauliflower is another one that a lot of people use um, because it's really you can work it into just about anything and you won't notice the flavor. So there are lots of ways to get your greens. Um, you don't have to get all six servings. Try just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Progress over perfection and just keep at it. Yep. I love that. Progress over perfection. That is that is key. Uh, Shannon wants to know, nuts and seeds are put forth as an ideal relative to insulin resistance. So Again, as we mentioned earlier, you know, that's high fat. So you want to try and stay away from that as much as possible and substitute maybe some whole grains in there. Um, you know, Dr. Essel, even the heart patients that Dr. Esselstyn works with, he talks about, you know, a, a small, you know, small handful of walnuts, you know, once a day. And, and that's fine. But the, the higher fat nuts, like the peanuts and the cashews and stuff like that, uh, insulin resistance, I would suggest staying away from that. Uh, okay. Amy. Boy, we uh, can ask well, this me, question a lot. Right. I would just say it's 40 years of study and uh, you isolate yourself in a mountain retreat. And <laughs> Go ahead, Amy. Um, generally, uh, we don't hire engine two or plant strong coaches um, as part of our team. All of our team actually are coaches in the respect that we all pull double duty. So whether you're a graphic designer like me, <laughs> or you do shipping and logistics like John, we all have uh, our coaching abilities. We've all studied. We've all um, focused on different areas. I used to be a USA boxing coach, and I used to run a youth nonprofit boxing program. So. I love working with kids. Other people like to focus on uh, the athletic side of thing on like our coach Carrie uh, did with Team Plant Strong and the Austin Marathon recently. Carrie is our podcast producer. So we all hold roles within the company, but we also do coaching on the side. Um, it's just one of the things that whatever we're passionate about in that course of study, like John is the habit expert because he studied tiny habits. There are so many different facets to coaching. It really does come down to mindset. It also comes down to what you want to focus on. If you want to go out into your community and you want to um, help people, figure out what focus you want to do. Do you want to work with athletes? Do you want to help people in the kitchen? Maybe you want to pursue um, a, co uh, a cooking course combined with a personal trainer certificate combined with the eCornell program for plant-based nutrition, put together a package of how you might offer things uh, to clients if that's what you want to do. But my best um, advice is volunteer. Volunteer in your mm -hmm. community, volunteer to give a workshop, give a talk about how you do things. Um, volunteer to help people learn how to cook. Um, especially young new moms who maybe don't have the experience because I'm going to speak from experience here. I don't think they have home ec at school anymore. I had home ec, but that was a million years ago. There are lots of people who really want to learn how to do this. There are lots of ways that you can get involved. There are all kinds of programs on the internet out there to help you learn more about how you might gather the knowledge that you can then share with others. And we recommend that you check out all of those sources. If you if you Google it, you will find what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vernon wants to know, can cabbages purple or green count towards greens? Technically, um, the only the only cabbage that counts towards Dr. Esselstyn's greens list is Napa cabbage. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure why the other cabbages don't. I know all his greens are picked based on their benefit to the endothelial cells and creating nitric oxide. So there must be something in the Napa cabbage that's not in the purple or the green that kind of helps with the nitric oxide production. So you want to take that one, Amy? That is a good question. I cannot answer questions when it comes to a medical diagnosis. If you are having low blood sugar, that is not something that I can answer. One of the things that we definitely do as part of the Plant Strong Coaching Program is we stay in our lane. We know what it is that we're capable of and 
things that we don't tackle is medical questions. We help people with mindset. We help people by giving them the list of foods that they can eat. But beyond that, if you have had a diagnosis of anything, if you're suffering from any sort of specific complications when it comes to food, health, lifestyle, or the medicines that you're taking, those are not questions that we can answer at Plant Strong. Yeah. How do we get a coach to work with us? Christy, great question. So Plant Strong does not offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. However, uh, Amy and I do run the Plant Strong coaching program, uh, which is called Trailblazer, uh, because we're blazing new trails. If every you, any of you are familiar with the uh, Ario Speedwagon song, um, that's not where it came from. But I did find out later that it per perfectly fits. So Amy and I were like, double bonus. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, Plant Strong, uh, thanks, Bess, for putting that up. PlantStrong.com slash coaching, um, where we have weekly live calls with Amy and I and guest coaches, and we really help you not only work through how to eat this way and how to cook to eat this way, but we spend a lot of time, you know, obviously on mindset and habits and avoiding mistakes that people make. And if you do make the mistake, we teach you how to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and, and pick up and carry on and don't look back, Right. So. And the best thing about the coaching program is that we have an entire coursework. So there are lectures from RIP and special guests in there. Maybe Anne and Essie are tossed into that mix. Um, <laughs> there's also, there are PDF downloads, there are guides, there are charts. There's all kinds of coursework in there for you, plus interactive activities. Plus, we do meet once a week on our Zoom coaching calls. Um, I know that we have some coaching members right here in this call or that are here in the comments and chat. Um, it's one of the programs that... You know, if you really want to dig deep and you really want to make change in your life, it's just something that I feel strongly about. I have used our tools to really change the way that I think about the ways that I operate in this world, the way that I um, choose to spend my time, the ways that I look forward to things. When I set my mindset that I really want to choose to do this, think about it this way. Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're going to be right. Mindset really does make a difference with everything that we do. And ultimately, no matter what your goals are, whether it's the fitness side or the mindfulness side, the wellness side, whether you're working on getting off your medications or whatever it is that you're working towards, the tools that we put forth in our coaching program can be applied to any and all of those things. So it's one of the things I really enjoy most about working for Plant Strong is that I get to share the tools that have really made an impact, not just on me, but on so many other people that we've had the privilege to be part of their journey over the years. So if it's something that you think that you really want to check out, hit us up on the website or send us a question. If you have a question, you can email us at coaching at plantstrong.com. We're glad to help, uh, help give you more information about the program. Yeah, Gina. Woo! Gina checking in. Gina was at the the Plant Strong Team Plant Strong down in Austin, Texas. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, with the coaching, that I think the the big part I get out of it, or the best part I think is, is that no matter where you are on your journey, whether it's I've never done this before in my life, or I've been doing it for ten years, but I'm a little rusty. Right? This program is for you. It really you can make it fit for where you are on your journey. Hey, Trisha, you make it fit for where you are in your journey and you can pick the things that you think are important to work on for you right now, right? We do have a path that you can go by, but lots of people skip around thinking, I, got, I, I really want to work on my habits or I really want to work on my why or my mindset, whatever it is. So there's lots of different ways to do that. All right, Amy, I think we've covered it for today. So the three mistakes that you guys will never, ever make again, <laughs> just kidding. The three mistakes that most people have when they start like this is overcomplicating. You're not going to do that, right? Too high expectations. Those, right? You're going to set re realistic expectations. And third, and again, what I think is most important is have that right mindset, right? Make sure your mindset is ready. Make sure you are thinking that this is the way I want to go. It's important enough to me and I'm willing to do whatever it takes and handle whatever challenges and obstacles come up along the way. And I'm going to make this change. All right. Amy, great to see you. Thanks for being. And everybody, thank you for being here. Have a great weekend and happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Bye.